Jake, are you there? Yeah. Hey, how are you? Man, I'm so awesome. jealous of your studio. That looks so cool. And and by the way, um, always great sartorial choices here. You're looking fresh, man. I love it. Um, if you don't know Jake Nicole, um, Jake is one of our top agents in Hamilton, Ontario, in the greater Toronto area, or as they say there, Toronto. Um, I got to meet Jake at EXPCon Canada last month with his business partner, David. Um, they were kind enough to get up on stage and do an amazing session for the agent who attended and I asked him if he'd come and share a little bit about that. Um, so welcome, Jake. Um, love having you here. We've been on this kind of journey together for the past several months of bringing talented folks in to share their tips, tricks, strategies, secrets. And, and in our conversation, you you run the gamut. So um, where do you want to start? Because everything from your b do have map to your database techniques, uh, I wish we had three hours with you, but where should we start? Awesome. So Brian, first off, man, it's so good to be here. I'm such a fan of what you're doing for the business. Like even just hearing the lead up to this today, you were sharing that we're, we're productive. So we're incredibly productive. And that should be everybody's goal on this call is like make real estate sales your focus and everything else will fall into place. So today, right. man, I'm just really excited to dive in and talk about what's helped me uh, have a little bit of the background. So do you mind if I just start by introducing a little bit of the background of what I've done in terms of talking about production? Let's talk about production first, and then I'll get yeah. into some strategies that I like to use. How's that sound? That sounds great, man. Let's do it. Awesome. So first off, I've been licensed uh, coming up on three years now. So I got licensed like the very end of 2021. So all I've known, Brian, is hard times, man. It's been a wild <laughs> journey being in the business. And uh, you can see somewhere floating over here, there's a couple of trophies that I like to keep there for my way over the overkill Zoom setup, all right? And my very first year in the business, I did 35 transactions. And I did, uh, in terms of GCI, I did about $750,000 in GCI my first 12 months in the business, all right? And won that Rookie of the Year award. And then the second year, which was last year for me, I did about 850,000. And this year I'm a little over uh, $600,000 year to date so far. Okay. Now, the reason I'm sharing all the numbers is not to brag at all, because I've got YouTube videos where I just like literally break down everything about how it is that I've done that production. But today, what I really want to dive into is what you and I were talking about, Brian, which is how do you organize yourself in a world where we've got all this NAR stuff going on? Rules feel like they're changing. Buyers and sellers feel like there's maybe a higher level of you needing to demonstrate value as quickly as possible so that you can establish trust and move things forward. So I've got a yeah. framework that I'd like to walk us through today at a high level. And then for anybody that has questions afterward, you can feel free to reach out and connect further online. I'm on Instagram everywhere else. But uh, how's that sound, man? You ready to jump right in? I am. And, and this is, um, you and I were talking about this. Look, I'm an agent. You're an agent. We all experience the same thing, right? You get your license, you you go sit down at your desk one day and you're like, okay, but what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> but what do yeah. I do? Yeah. Yeah. And so are you going to, um, do you want to call up your, your framework on your, on your laptop there? Yeah. So I'll pull this up. And to your point, this is exactly what I feel like I noticed a ton with myself in terms of what I would run into. And you let me know when you can see this here. But what I absolutely noticed was that for myself and many of the other agents that are on our team here, this dilemma that people would run into is they wouldn't know how to orient themselves with their sales time to be as effective as possible. Like, I don't know about you guys, the last thing I want to do is I don't want to sit down at my desk and ask myself the question of what should I be doing today? How should I be bringing value to people? Where do I start? Because that's how you totally overwhelm yourself. And we know that complexity is the enemy of execution. Like simple beats hard every day of the week. Just keep things really simple. Can you see my screen there, Brian? I can, yeah. Amazing. Okay. So here's what we're looking at. And you see the BDU have along the top, right? Yeah, I like that. So um, if you're not familiar with this, Stephen Covey talked a lot about this. And James Clear, he, he referred to it as um, identity-based uh, and then process based and then outcome based in our behavior change. And it's it's a, a way of thinking about who you are first as an identity and then working towards what you need to do to become that and then having that. I love that. You just taught that better than me, man. I should have you teaching this. That's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, to your point there, it's like I think what we kind of forget is that 
as agents, we maybe overcomplicate things. I'm going to really try to just simplify things for you today because I feel like we're in a world where complexity is increasing. We have conversations around AI. We have conversations around, yeah, how do you stand out amidst increasing competition? Like there's just a lot of variables that it feels like are happening with interest rates, with wars, with economic uncertainty. Like there's all of this complexity. And I feel like our job is to understand that confused people don't buy. So we need to be confident. We need to be very clear with our own processes. And I actually am jealous of many of you that if you're an individual salesperson or you're you know, brand new in the business or you're a high producing, but you're still relatively your own agent, you have the best job in the world because it's so clear and it's so simple, which is just serving people and sales. All right. So here's what I want to highlight for you guys, because this at a glance is very overwhelming, but Brian just broke it into these three sections. This B section is the identity section. Here's all you need to know today. You have to define in this section why it is that you're doing what you're doing and get clear about it. And if you haven't written it all down before, just start there. That's the easy version. The medium version is you going through and actually starting to define things like having your 411 well written actually having a mission, vision, values, goals, principles, statement written out. And the hard version would be like you going through, you know, EOS from the book Traction, the entrepreneurial operating system, and really getting super clear about your, your why, your mission, vision, values, where are you going to be five years from now, 10 years from now? Can you have your big, hairy, audacious goal defined really well? Okay, that would be like the hard version. And the reason you actually want to start there and use Simon Sinek start with why is because Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, Monday morning in three days and you're going to wake up and you better have a darn good reason to get out of bed and want to get after it. That isn't just about the money. It's not just about, you know, one little thing here or there. You want to have a mission that you're moving towards that's compelling and exciting for you. So that's the reason we start there, because all the next thing, which is essentially from this line all the way over to this line, this big do section is all process and process is really hard if you don't have the oil of the vision, the mission, the why you're doing it to get the gears in motion, all right? So we're actually gonna jump right into this what section and this is what we're gonna kind of focus on. The what is, what is it you should be doing to actually operate your business? And this framework is really helpful. So number one is understanding that you wanna have an outbound lead gen time that is in your calendar. The way that I set up my calendar now, Brian, in, in terms of time blocking, is I set up my calendar so that I actually have a couple days of the week where I just do sales all day long, nothing else. And what I used to do is I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna do sales time in the morning, then I'm gonna run out on appointments, then I'm gonna do some content stuff one day, then I'm gonna run out on appointments, then I'm gonna do sales. And I would find that my days would get hijacked. They'd get That's hijacked right. by people just calling me, there'd be all this stuff going on, there'd be a deal suddenly. And then what happens is my sales time gets sacrificed. And then you end up on the real estate roller coaster because you get busy, you stop doing sales, and then as you know, suddenly 90 days out is where you start to actually experience the work that you're doing today is 90 days in the future where you'll experience the fruit and the hard work of all the seeds you're planting today. So, That's right. And you know, Jake, yeah. um, a different way of saying what you just said when you said our days get hijacked, to be honest, we allow our days to get hijacked. And that's because we haven't identified ourselves as the professional lead generator at this time or the professional you know salesperson at this time right so a lot of it is what do you allow to have happen because look you're not going to allow those things to interrupt your sleep time you're not going to allow those things to interrupt your meals you're not going to allow those things to interrupt you in your church synagogue mosque whatever so what you allow for is what you will get right Man, what you just gave is probably the best analogy because for all of you watching, Brian, you just gave a bunch of those examples. Here's a really real example for all of you watching right now. If you were the person on camera right now, would your phone be turned off? Would you let calls be popping up on your screen? Would you let anybody get a hold of you? Would you probably even message your spouse like I did and say, hey, please try to keep our my little one-year-old son, Harvey, our little boy, please try to keep him quiet right now because I'm doing something super important. It's like I set up an environment that is indistractable. I'm totally dialed in. Nobody can get a hold of me right now. And to your point too, Brian, it's like when you're sleeping, 
your phone's in sleep mode. You're not like leaving the ringer on, answering calls in the middle of the night. It's like, you know, to protect your time. So we have to have that same level of intentionality with the most important thing we do, which is connecting with people. So sales time is really number one, outbound lead generation is you just trying to connect with people. And I broke it down into a couple simple categories that you can focus on. You can make yeah, calls. I'm really curious about how you generate leads and, and what your process is there. Yeah, so the first year in business, uh, you might think, okay, your first year, Jake, if you did 35 deals, you must have just had a, a really big sphere. And the truth is I was living in a city that I hadn't grown up in. I'd only been living in that city for about six months. And the majority of my business actually came from me being really outgoing with door knocking, picking up the phone and calling leads as fast as I could get them. So here's exactly what I did, Brian. Number one is door knocking was the most important tool that I had because I lived in a neighborhood where I could go knock on all the doors in that neighborhood and I could say, hey, my name's Jake. I'm actually your neighbor. I live down at you know, one, two, three fake street over there. And they would, you know, poke their head out the door and look and like, oh yeah, I recognize the house. And I'm like, yeah, hey, I actually live here. I'm, you know, not going to meet the neighbors, just coming around to meet everybody and say, hey, but I actually live here in the neighborhood and I am a real estate agent as well. How long you been here for? And I would just strike up the conversation, Brian, and people were so receptive because I would use that. And then the second I get a listing, I'd go door knock it several times. I'd knock it and say, hey, we have a listing that's coming up. Hey, we have an open house that's coming up. Hey, we're on the market now. Did you want to see all the photos, videos, details? Hey, we've now sold the house. Um, you know, are you interested in selling your house? Because we've got other buyers that might be interested. It's like four excuses to go door knock or an area to talk about yourself as a person and bring value to people. I love that. You know, every top agent I've known and asked about their lead generation strategy, you know, door knocking has been one of those lead generation strategies. So for those of you who are a little hesitant, reticent, that is one of the best strategies to dominate a farm area, which is one of the best strategies to build a base for your business. So to your point right there, I've got this little reminder on the bottom for our team, which is masters never don't do the basics. And I wrote it that way on purpose. So you'd think really hard when you're reading it because masters always do the basics. It's like what I see a lot of people doing right now, Brian, is and, and maybe for you, the person watching this today, you're you can relate to this and you're getting a little bit carried away with this which is you are trying to come up with a creative solution where you're hearing all the buzz about ai which all the buzz is real but the problem is you're trying to build the foundation of your business around creativity and the challenge there is the masters that are adding creativity to their business they're adding it on top of the basics and That's they right. never don't do the basics. So this little graphic over here shows systems on the bottom, which creates a stable foundation. And once you've done those systems, then you can add on the creativity. But if you put creativity on the bottom, your entire business is not stable because you're not going to end up adding those systems and those processes on top. What's going to happen is you're going to struggle through the creative phase. And here's a great example, Brian. I've got agents on my team that um, not too long ago, we're like, Jake, I really want to figure out how to like really just focus on social media as lead generation. And the challenge mm -hmm. that I found is that if that's your like core way that you're trying to drive your business, here's what happens. You're going to start to build up people from social media. Let's say it goes perfect, Brian. And you start building up all these people from people from social media that are excited and interested to chat with you. Well, what's your process to keep them engaged and make sure that your bucket of all the leads that are coming in isn't just filled with holes in the bottom and everybody's falling through. And the this answer is, is the biggest challenge for us. Yeah. And the answer is your CRM. It's the basics. It's like, make sure that everybody that you speak with, you take that person and you have a CRM that you put them into and you build a profile of that person. Cause you're going to forget about people. You're going to forget about what they said to you. You're going to forget about those details. And that CRM becomes your guiding light so that you know who you're talking to, what their motivation is, what their time frame is, et cetera. And all of that is the basics. So it's like you do the basics and you get good at calling people. Then when you add a creative solution like social media and all these leads start piling in, you have a process to run them through that'll make all that time and effort you've spent to generate those leads yield itself into results. Hey, Jake. It I would love for you to spend like five hours talking about a database. We've got a couple minutes. Could you show us? Because you showed me your follow-up boss system. Now, look, yeah. uh, with eXp, you have KV Core. 
what Jake's about to show you, you can do in there as well. He uses Follow Up Boss, another great program as well, especially for teams and, and uh, large teams and, and small teams alike. But what I found interesting is how you had your database organized. And I think it's a great, um, a great thing for us to learn from. Yeah, big time. So here's what I can show you just kind of at a high level right here is that my database is sorted so that I can sit down and know exactly who to go after. So number one, this first bucket is new leads, no call attempts. These are people that have just come into my database that haven't been contacted yet. They are arguably the most important people to call from the perspective of one of them might be someone who wants to sell or buy right now. So those are the first buckets that I call every day. The second is new leads that I haven't reached daily. All right. And I've arranged my database here, my CRM. You can use any CRM. They all have the same function. The best CRM, in case you're going to reach out and ask me, is the one that you actually use. So it doesn't matter. Just use your CRM. And these are set up so that people automatically go into these smart lists that update with contacts. So new leads, no call attempts, new leads, not reach daily. Then I call people that have just come back to my website. Then I call people that I've labeled as hot. I call them once a week. I have people that I've labeled as warm. I call them every other week. And I have people that are cold that I call every other month just to check in with. Uh, hot means that they're looking at making a move in the next three months. And cold is six plus months and warm is there in the middle, okay? Got that it. alone is enough for you to move everything forward in terms of your business and getting clear. Then I've got past clients and my sphere that I contact quarterly. And the simple script there, Brian, is the classic Ford script. How's your family doing? How's your job going? Occupation, recreation. What are you doing for fun these days? Hey, Brian, you mentioned you had this big <clears> dream <throat> of going out and doing this thing. How's that dream going for you? And naturally, people will say, by the way, what are you up to, man? Are you still in real estate? How's that going? Or I saw you're crushing it. Or what are you doing for work these days? And you can you know, carry on from there. This is the name of the game. So listen, we all want every single person that we meet to be an immediate piece of business. That's not going to be the case. In fact, the vast majority of people you're going to meet are not going to be immediate business. They're going to be future business if you can stay in touch with them and really build that relationship and really add value. And, and one of the ways that you do that is exactly what you're talking about. Understand the person. Now, if you're getting up there in years as I am, good luck remembering all those details as you meet a vast amount of people. And you're going to need to meet a vast amount of people so that the law of percentages work in your favor to give you the kind of business that you want. And so a system like this, that's organized where it, it basically reminds you today, this is what you're doing is exactly what you need in your business. So Jake, thank you so much for being on today. We really appreciate it, man. Um, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, best way to reach out to me would be through Instagram. Go Jake Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-L-E. Drop me a follow. I'll follow you back right away. Message me on there and you'll hear back from me. So I'm looking forward to it, guys. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with us. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you guys for letting us come play. Uh, Frank, let us hand it back over to you.